Hi everyone, um, welcome to our panel on how to get into technology. My name is Chelsea Kaufman, I'm co-founder and CEO of Learn Academy. I am a uh, avid supporter of Geek Girl um, and the tech community uh, in San Diego. And we have an amazing group of women out here who are all in different aspects of technology and we want to kind of just talk about how they got into it and talk to you about how you can get more involved in San Diego and the different communities and, and just see how you can get started. So why don't we just go down the row and we'll have everyone introduce yourselves, uh, where you're working, what you're doing, just a quick little snippet uh, about who you are and how it relates to technology. Hi everybody, my name is April Wenzel and I'm the founder of a company called Compassionate Coding. Um, I've spent the past 10 years as a software engineer and a software engineering manager, and so now I run my own company helping other tech companies become um, more effective in their collaboration and working on teams. All right. Hi everyone, I'm Kimber Brookstein. I am Senior Program Manager of Tech Women at Intuit which is a company-wide initiative for um, our campuses to attract, retain, and promote women technologists. Um, so I'm really excited to be here and share my story. And that's it. Hey, everybody. My name is Emma Castor. Um, I'm a Learn alum. I attended in 2015. And after graduating, I started working at a consultancy based in Southern Oregon called Zeal, and we make web and mobile applications. So I'm an engineer there. Uh, I'm Leslie. I work at Walmart Labs. I'm a backend engineer. Uh, all the differences go to Walmart with me. Oh, my service. <laughs> <laughs> my name is just spelled there. There's no N. So uh, just like when anybody's like, oh, what an analyst. No N. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I actually did Happy Hacker, which is another boot camp, uh, about a year ago. And that's how I transitioned uh, to another boot camp. Um, okay. My name is uh, Patty Grammer, and I currently work at MindTouch as a DevOps engineer. Um, I do a lot of stuff, uh, automation stuff with the cloud, specifically working with AWS, which is Amazon Web Services, creating virtual environments and um, infrastructure in the cloud. Great. So tell me, and we don't have to keep going in order if anyone can talk when they want to, but tell me a little bit about what your favorite thing about technology, whether it's a specific platform or a community aspect of technology or something like that that uh, you're uh, really passionate about right now. I think we'll get to Hello? Um, well, for me, uh, what I really like about tech is just seeing something come from nothing into something that somebody can utilize and use and just seeing it in action saying like, I did that, I made that, I made it do that. Uh, that for me is so satisfying and it's almost like a fight, you know, you get out of it. It's, um, it's really cool, it's fun. And um, yeah, I work with AWS a lot, so there's a lot of um, prototyping and testing and stuff and things like that I do. Yeah, I'm with you. I love to make things. Um, before transitioning into tech, I worked in marketing for an e-commerce company, and so my main job was writing copy for sales emails. And so I felt really uh, removed from the product, and I didn't really feel like I was making much of a difference in the business, and now I build the products. And so um, I have a huge impact on um, how customers have their problems solved. So that's very, very empowering for me. And I kind of come in on the other side of that, where I am not an actual technologist, but my passion is creating pathways for women and underrepresented groups in tech. So working with local organizations, kind of showing beginners, big career, um, whatever level you are, that there is a path, and that, that try to help and create that awesome work environment where like women feel empowered and like diversity is embraced. That's a big part of um, our goal at Intuit and just my goal prior to this role as well, just within the community. Um, so for me, it's not necessarily the technology, but it's kind of enabling others to have that experience, um, which is where I get a lot of reward from. Yeah. <laughs> I have this little 
And I was kind of frustrated with my job, and I was thinking I wanted to leave LA, but I needed something to move forward to. And I couldn't just come back down here without a plan. Um, and so I found it, and, or I found this article, and was like, hmm, maybe that's a good idea. I talked to my dad about it, who is an electrical engineer, and he said, yeah, actually, I know a lot of software developers, and I think that you'd be really good at it, and like, we will support you if you want to do that. So, um, you know, the investment uh, was four months instead of four years going back to school. I'd already kind of been thinking about grad school, but didn't really know what I wanted to do, so I was kind of like, well, I'll try this. And I'm so glad I did, because it was like one of the best decisions I ever possibly could have made. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I definitely think like if I had not decided to go to boot camp, I would not be here today. <laughs> I would be in a completely different field, probably not as happy as I am now. That's great. Uh, I think that you know it's interesting that it sounds like there's a lot of you that have tech experience from a young age. What do you think it was? This was some of my questions I sent you. <laughs> Whenever you got first introduced to technology or going into some big back data uh, analysis, that what was it that drew you there? Or was there somebody that pointed it out to you or a class or got you really excited about wanting to take those courses or go into those fields? I'm happy to answer that. Um, so I started coding actually in high school, but earlier I had started working with the command line or the terminal or where you type stuff in, MS DOS, Microsoft DOS prompt. Um, and it's not actually coding, but it's like typing command, word commands into a computer and it doing things versus you know just clicking with a mouse and things like that. And so I started doing that as a kid, and it's because um, my dad was a professor, and so he was able to get the old computers from the university and bring them home. So we had like those old school, like green writing on black, you know, kind of computers. And so, uh, so I would play with those, and I just, it was so fun even just to like look at different file systems inside of the computer and um, play games, of course. So, uh, so it was kind of the games. I wanted to make games, uh, which I've done a bit professionally, but it's, it's not as exciting now that I'm an adult, to be honest. But, um, but that was the original motivators. I wanted to make these things that I was using every day, and so that's kind of what drove me to that course. Um, uh, I actually, with the same old computer, uh, I'm actually from, I was raised in South America, so things are more expensive there. So I had like the old uh, Mac 2, which is the green one. And um, the program we had, it, it would actually boot up and it was like a little triangle on the screen. And it's like, how do you make this triangle make sense? And so I had to learn English and programming. It was actually a drawing program. You could draw programmatically. Uh, so that's kind of like how, how I got into it. And then after that, I was always like, Oh, like in my family, I was like, oh, I'm the technical computer person. So, like, that's how I saw myself, just because that's, that's, what, you're, that's what I was told. And so, uh, I actually went to college for aerospace engineering, uh, because that was what I wanted to do. And then, uh, turns out, their engineering space is far less friendly to women than the computer space. Uh, so, then, that's when I got to the day, I was just kind of like, I don't want to be in that environment. Uh, and, that was in the early 2000s, I'm sure it's much right now. So, again, it's very similar to your story, where um, my dad was into the computers and everything, so he had an Atari. And I didn't do any programming on the Atari, but I played with it and played games and everything like that. And I remember there was this, um, this game that was code, uh, like command based, where you'd say, okay, I want to walk right, I want to go right, I want to go left, and kind of thing. And they would give you a shooter and adventure story, kind of. I thought that was really cool. But then um, in school, I had to take a uh, computer class, and it was actually in there where I first got my programming experience using, like, uh, I think it was Turtle or something, and then went to Key Basic, and then I loved it, and then I told my teacher, and she's like, well, um, why don't you take um, the Pascal class? And I'm like, okay, so I took Pascal the next year, and it just every year in high school was a, um, a course, and it was just kind of funny, like, um, this was in 1995, I was taking an online course, and I didn't realize I was taking an online course. I was living in Japan on a military base, taking an AP class that was all online. And the Lotus Notes and this blue screen terminal to upload or code, it was, yeah, I, but I did, didn't click until maybe about five years ago, but that was all my class. <laughs> so, and then my students were with me, so, um, yeah, so that was my first experience with the program. Um, so, 
Leslie, you mentioned a little bit about uh, some of the obstacles you've hit in the beginning in looking at the environment uh, for the aerospace. Um, uh, can any of you kind of talk about any obstacles that you've hit, hit along the way in your journey into technology or currently uh, in, in the current space that might be helpful to our audience members? And I'm missing when I got into technology, I had no problems. It's been 10 years from the team to the game engine and a year working at Walmart, and it has been fantastic. I don't know the San Francisco thing. I don't know what other experiences other people have had, but it has been absolutely fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I have the same experience. I haven't had any, any too major or anything like that. Um, I've had really good mentors and everything throughout my career. So um, yeah, it's it's been great. I really enjoy it. Um, I have to say that I think one obstacle is just how the technology changes and how you have to keep up with it. Um, I started in web development and now I'm doing server stuff and networking. And networking is my biggest um, technological um, skill. And I, I'm enjoying it and I love it. And uh, so yeah, it's just that ever evolving um, skills that transitions into different areas of tech. I think uh, the hardest thing for me is just that there's so much to learn. Um, and starting in a field of, like at the very ground level, um, you don't realize what you don't know until you kind of start to get into it. And then uh, you know, there's just waves of like, wow, like how am I able to do anything? Um, but like then you look back and realize, wow, like look where I was a year ago. I, you know, I didn't even know anything of what I'm doing now. Um, so being a learner in an organization of a lot of people who are very, very experienced, um, I had to learn to be a really good communicator and be able to ask good questions and kind of advocate for myself as well um, in saying like, hey, I don't understand this. Like, I am very capable of learning, but um, can we take a step back here? Um, and uh, so that's been an interesting challenge. Um, I'm also the only woman who works for my, my company. Um, and, you know, it's not a bad thing, but um, it can be a little bit interesting, like, kind of trying to navigate those, those uh, dynamics of communication as well. Yeah, and I was just going to um, come on it from an organization or community side. Um, I think a lot of progress has been made in terms of people acknowledging that you know there's less representation of women in technology and other people being open to kind of embracing that and helping to change it. Um, I also think every company is different and every culture is different. So if you are a new technologist or a mid-career senior, it just like you know what works for you and just to find an environment um, in your day-to-day -day that you feel comfortable in. That's super important. And then community-wise, um, I think we're starting to see a lot more women show up and and kind of not be that intimidated or have that imposter syndrome, which is something we talk about always in all the boot camps and just in general, because I know people that are senior level that still have that imposter syndrome that don't want to say the wrong thing. So I think it's just being aware of yourself and what you have to contribute and being confident in it which can be hard and difficult, but knowing that the community is growing and starting to embrace it more and more is very encouraging. I'm just going to jump in because I just moved here from San Francisco, so it may be a San Francisco thing, but um, I definitely have seen a lot of um, obstacles related to uh, some of the toxic environments uh, that you may be hearing about in the news with Uber and whatnot. I've definitely seen that at a lot of different companies. Um, I've worked at 10 ish companies over my career. Uh, partly I jumped around so much because of toxic environments. So that plays out in a number of different ways. I mean, sometimes it's subtle things like, um, you know, we're trying to hire somebody and everybody's talking about how we want to hire an iOS guy or, you know, a Rails guy. And like, I would never call myself a Rails guy, right? So I feel like when you put that in your head, it's kind of like when you say, what do you picture when somebody says cable guy? You know, you're not picturing a woman. Um, so like it's subtle things like that, and then the most, and then there's overt things like, um, you know, luckily I've, I haven't been the victim of like serious sexual harassment, but kind of like um, uh, undermining comments or like the man interrupting thing where men will constantly interrupt you, that happens like all the time. So I kind of had to establish myself as more um, what people would call as abrasive, and so 
trying to navigate these waters, I was trying to be more assertive, and then the, the male managers would say I was being abrasive because I was being assertive. So it's kind of like that, you know, where do you fit in? So that's been an obstacle. It's like as a woman who's trying to be assertive, but also, you know, maintain that kind of kindness that like is important to me, walking that path has been, you know, a challenge. Um, but that's part of why I started my company, so it led me to be an entrepreneur. So I think, you know, there's always a, a way to spin it into a positive. But, and the other thing to remember is all companies are different. So if you ever find yourself in a toxic environment, change companies. Like, I know it's not easy, but get on the path to start doing that because there's always an answer and there's always a better place. That's great. Um, Emma, I just want to kind of reiterate a little bit about what you were saying about a learning environment. What I think is so exciting about technology is that you're not the only one that doesn't know things. That there is not one person in the world that knows everything about technology. And so we all offer really important things and different, uh, we bring value to every conversation. And so recognizing that we are all in a learning space is really important. Um, that being said, uh, is there what kind of advice would you give somebody that is just coming in or thinking about maybe transitioning into technology or wanting to get more involved in the community um, or, or any of those things? This I expect an answer from everyone. <laughs> I could start with that and jump in. Um, I would say join local organizations and meetup groups. Um, so for beginners, I'm also on the leadership team of Girl Development. Girl Development's an amazing organization nationally for women to come together, learn to code in a safe environment. But there's a lot of intro weekend workshops, and everything's on the weekend. You can do one-offs. You don't have to commit. It's a good way to dabble and like join a community, a community um, that you feel comfortable in. Yeah, or a committee, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You're on the leadership team. Um, but also, for those of you who don't know, uh, next week is San Diego Startup Week. So community, city events, there's a whole developer track for San Diego Startup Week, which I am co-captain of. Um, tickets are on sale right now. <laughs> $60, 20% off. Uh, get your tickets online, it's next Monday through Friday. But going out into the community, seeing what's out there, listening to others speak and give workshops and um, you just don't realize how many free resources there are right around you. So search for them, look for them, find ones that fit you, and yeah, get involved. There's plenty of support um, out there, and people are always wanting to tell their story and connect with someone and like find a mentor. Uh, for people starting out, I would say uh, build a thing that does a thing. It's so broad and there's so much information that it's easy to get lost. And so just take like the smallest possible project you could complete and just complete it. And so that you don't move on until you have a thing you can show. Uh, because that, that'll give you that positive feedback, the positive reinforcement. And when you do, do go talk to my friends, they're like, oh, what are you doing? And you say, well, I've looked at all these resources. And then I think you get a lot more impact, or I get more impact when people come to me and say, this is the thing that I built, and it's small and tiny, and it's wonderful, and, and, and they have done the thing. Um, and so that's what I would encourage people to actually just do a finished product, no matter how small it is. Um, for me, it's find a mentor. I would have not gotten as far as I've gotten without a mentor. Every job and career of um, Every job I've had in my career, there has been that one person that just guides me and um, just you know supports me and helps me and you know respects my ideas and my skill set. So um, yeah, find a mentor that will help you and you know give you that support. Okay. Uh, so my advice would be to uh, embrace the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. So if you ever find yourself saying, I'm not technical, or I'm not creative, or I'm not good at computer science, or I'm not good at technology, whatever, like just stop it right there because um, no matter what skill we're talking about, you're always capable of doing better. So that's the idea behind a growth mindset is that no matter where you are now, you can get better. And so I think it's easy to become intimidated when there is so much to learn at first, but just to remember that you get to choose which of those things you want to learn, and then you can learn them, anything you want, really. So I think maintaining that kind of positive 
mindset, um, not feeling like you're limited in some way, because you're not, and um, the sky's the limit in terms of what you can learn. This is all like such good advice. Um, I think in addition to all of these things, practice self-care. Um, make sure that as you're as you're getting into um, a totally new field where there is a lot to learn and there are a lot of very experienced people, um, listen to yourself and do what you need to do to be successful. Because if you get burned out, if you get exhausted, if you're stressed, then you can't be your best you. So um, yeah, that's great. Um, I, I want to follow up on your advice and take it one step further. Mostly, I want you to tell me how do I find a mentor? Because I feel like I, I, I love that advice and I think that it's so important to be surrounded by those people. But when we go into these new fields, sometimes I'm like, I don't even know where to start. Like, do I just walk up to somebody and say, will you be my mentor? <laughs> well, for me, I was, um, I, was, I was just very lucky to be in the right place at the right time, I think, because um, uh, some of the decisions I made, one of them was, um, like, I was getting tired of my job, and so I went back to school at one point, and then from there, I, during my capstone project, I uh, partnered with a local school to do a, a project for them, and it turned out I ended up getting hired by them. So, and that person actually became a mentor who uh, recruited me for another job, and, you know, later on down the line. So, it's just, you know, you, you find, you kind of click with somebody, and, you know, uh, you find that person that's willing to, you know, to be there when you have questions or have a, you know need help on something or advice you know um, so yeah just the find it's a feeling almost you know that they're there to help you and yeah it's hard to find a mentor but I just was very lucky to have them on there like my high school my high school teacher she was a mentor she guided me through that and then in college there was a teacher who you know mentored me teacher teachers are great great mentors to help you get started they have a lot of networking too so they can find others outside of the school system that can help you as well. Yeah. And I would also uh, just recommend if you're in a current company or you're about to make a career move, find someone at your company who's just been there longer. It, a mentor can be someone right around you. It could be, let's go grab a coffee and just make a connection. It could be you searching on LinkedIn and like searching job titles that you want but don't yet have and reaching out to a few people saying, hey, I'd love to learn more about you. Do you have time for a quick call? Or can I take you to coffee and like pick your brain for a couple minutes? Random reach outs, so you'll be surprised at how people actually do want to give back. People like talking about themselves and talking about their own story. Um, it's an easy way to just listen and learn. Um, so it could be someone sitting right next to you who you don't know, like you could be my mentor. Like, I've never gone from one different, you know, career path and turned it around into something completely different. Like, I'm still very much a marketer and a community builder, right? So I didn't go straight into technology. So it can be someone that you would never expect. Your definition of mentorship can change. It doesn't necessarily have to be this person that is like unreachable or untouchable. It can be someone sitting right next to you. I also want to add that you get when you give. So, um, you know, everybody has different competencies and different skills, and even if you're new to the field, you're good at other things. Um, so volunteer, participate in the community as much as you can. Like, I uh, I didn't know anything about Java, but um, somebody in the community was looking for an assistant Java teacher, and she said, oh, I can teach you, I can teach you what you would need to teach these students, or high school students. And so she ended up being one of my mentors, just because I was like, yeah, I'll come and volunteer with you and help you teach kids. So, um, yeah, yeah, participate, and, and you never know who you'll meet and who you'll find, but making those connections can help you grow as well. I just want to say two things on the mentor front, because I haven't really had very many mentors. Um, so one thing is an offer to anyone in the audience that I'm happy to mentor or, or recommend a mentor, so feel free to reach out. I set aside time every week to mentor because it's important to me to give back. Um, and then two is a little non-traditional but you can be your own mentor so like I've had to be my own mentor a lot because um, I don't know why but I just have um, maybe it's just because I feel like I think pretty independently it's hard to find like-minded people but um, what that means is 
uh, tapping into that like inner voice that you have somewhere deep inside you that's wise and kind. And so when you're struggling, like practice the self care that she was recommending, and um, you know say those encouraging things to yourself in your self talk rather than being critical of yourself. Um, do research online, read encouraging, inspiring books, um, and I think you know so. It, don't feel like if I can't find a mentor, I can't get ahead. It is really useful when you can find one for sure. It gives you that extra boost, but it's definitely possible to provide that to yourself too, I think. Mm. I have something to add. Um, don't say what she said. Don't ask somebody to be your mentor like that. Uh, because uh, it, all, all I think about is, is how much how much does this person expect me from me? Um, I, do, I do mentor people, and it is sort of like we're going to meet on a regular basis type of thing. Uh, but I had people come up to me and I'm like, no, like, like it's almost like a, a reaction of like, I don't have time for this. Uh, so, so be careful with how, how much you ask of people. And also, uh, the people I've enjoyed mentoring most are people who are out there who do things for themselves. So it isn't just about getting the advice, it's about putting it in action. Because if I spend time with you and, and, and you know, give my time and give my energy into, into you, and you come back and like you talk a couple months later and you still haven't really done anything, it's, it's, you, you feel the relationship because there's, there's no point. Uh, so uh, do small asks and do things for yourself uh, so that your mentor can see progress. And, and don't call them mentors unless they very specifically <laughs> say, I want to be your mentor or your support mentorship program. Like it's just, it's a very weighty word. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I think that reminds me of how. Um, Melanie was talking about in her keynote about her like people. She just has her people around her that ups and downs, whatever it is, that she knows who she can call. And I think that, that that's exactly what you're saying, that she like doesn't necessarily call them mentors or anything like that, but there are people that she can just call up for advice here and there. And I think it's great because I do think um, all of that was really great ways to find people, but a lot of it has to do with just simply fostering relationships and, and that, that follow through. That when you go to these meetups and, and conferences like this, that it is not uncommon, and I bet all of us on stage have gotten this, that the next day we're all going to have like 45 LinkedIn uh, <laughs> requests. Uh, and, and messages from people that like want to connect with you or want to talk with you, and that we're that is a part of what this community is about. And so I think that you know those of us that are excited about mentoring or is excited about fostering new relationships, because it, like Emma said, it goes both ways, right? That we are all people, and we never know like where that next connection is going to go. And so in making sure that we're fostering that relationship, so that you're both getting and getting from it, is really important. Um, great. I want, I want to take just one second to kind of jump to the other side of things because I want to talk about what, what can we do, um, those of us that are already working in the field or are in technology, to encourage more people or to make it more welcoming or um, just ways that we can reach out and, and foster the next generation of technologists get them excited about this field as much as we are. Um, for me, it's creating a like, pay it for it, forward environment and culture. Um, it's important to you know take your learnings and, and I think communicate them to people who maybe haven't gone through a similar experience. Um, so for me, you know, my take is is community giving back because one thing leads to another, and you never know what relationship will take you to the next level, take you to your next role. Um, it's just, you just never know. So it's always, for me, being um, open to talking, being you know very communicative about what my goals are within the community or within a certain organization. And I just say, like, get involved and, and pay it forward. Yeah, I'll add to that, because um, I totally agree. 
Uh, I think it's important once you are in a role where you have specialized skills, for example, coding, that you um, that you give back by, by sharing that with other people. So it actually came to mind, um, Leslie, when you said uh, that people called you data monkey or something. I think like not doing that is something that you can do. Like not calling people like degrading names just because they don't know the same things you know. Uh, so whoever said that to you, you know, I would say that's that's not very positive or welcoming or encouraging. Um, so like in your company, you could even so like one time I taught the marketing people in my company how to use GitHub just because you know they wanted to use it to manage stuff. So as you learn skills along the way, like you you immediately have something to offer. Like even as soon as you learn, you know, even if you're a beginner, you still know something that other people don't know. So you could get start giving back right away. Right. Okay. So I, I want to open up to the to all of you. Uh, if you have any questions for, I'm going to start asking you questions if you don't have any questions for me. But uh, does anyone have any questions for our panelists? How many? Oh, go ahead. Did um, Emma, who were, did, did they help you find the job after your program? Uh, they help me find an internship. So part of part of the uh, learn uh, curriculum is we're placed in one month internships. For a lot of my peers, that turned into a job. Um, but even even though like they didn't place me in a job, I made the connection with my uh, my future employer um, because he came in and spoke. So I actually interviewed with a lot of um, a lot of companies that Learn had been uh, networking with and like had brought people in, um, and a lot of my peers did as well. What made you seek out like a boot camp versus maybe going for another degree? What was the benefit? Of, was it time? Yeah, I thought of it was time and cost. Um, it was a much lower risk investment, I felt like, um, than trying to go back and like go, go into a career. And like, you know, I, I felt like I was a pretty recent college graduate and um, my college didn't really help me, like prepare me with the skills I needed to like enter the workforce, I felt like. So I was like, well, if I go into a new field, um, I may have a new set of skills, but I will still maybe be the same amount of not prepared. Um, but, but I mean, a lot of boot camps were, were talking about um, like job placement and like in, integrating or um, integrating with, with the community. Um, so uh, when I was when I was going to boot camp, there were only two I think down here. Um, but I had a really great connection with Chelsea when I interviewed, and I felt like this was the right choice for me. And so, um, and, and then continuing to be involved and learn, and the the growing um, junior developer community in San Diego has been very very rewarding for me as well. <laughs> that works, we have
specific workshops or events that occur in San Diego that you could recommend? I can take that. <laughs> so next week is San Diego Startup Week. It is week long, are you familiar? I'm actually planning to go. Okay, yeah. perfect. So there, there's a lot of content, and there's a lot of developer and specific content. You can talk to me after, because I'm one of the track captains for the F track. Um, also July 9th, piggybacking off of um, Rails Bridge is Jingle Girls. So I'm actually an organizer for Jingle Girls too. It's the exact same format. It's a one day free workshop for women who want to learn Django um, and Python. And um, we're still accepting applications. And so that's on a Sunday um, at the downtown San Diego Library. And then in terms of like local events, I just suggest joining every single meetup group you can that is of interest. Mm -hmm. So there's SD Ruby, there's San Diego um, JavaScript group, um, all the boot camps have a group. Everyone does events with different focuses on career growth, on mentorship. Um, so Meetup is like one of the primary um, primary resources that I've always used. There's also a website, um, San Diego Tech Scene has a calendar of all local events. Um, Start Startup Digest, which Leslie runs, also has a calendar of local events. So there's an overload of resources, so you gotta pick and choose which ones. I, I always go to Meetup first because it's just easy to see everything right there. Um, so Girl Develop It, um, I would join that group if you're a beginner, I know Leslie can talk about when we do code. Um, but yeah, so, so there's lots of resources and those are the ones that I recommend that I'm always a part of. Um, we partner with Athena at Intuit. Athena, if you know, um, they're a great organization and they have really um, focused content workshops on career growth and in all areas of STEM. Um, so those are a few organizations that I would suggest, you know, Girl Development and just utilizing all the meetup groups. Oh, sure. Uh, Women in Code is uh, coming to San Diego, and uh, the synergy that we have is that girl development, girl development is like perfect for where you are right now, how to get started. Uh, Women in Code are for the people in the audience who are already in the technology field who want to get ahead, uh, who are beyond like the intro to whatever language, uh, but want to uh, accelerate their careers and excel in technology. And uh, we're going to be launching in August. But yes, if you don't meet up, uh, because that's the thing that most groups end up on the other side. I just want to plug one specific meetup group, which is We All JS. Um, it happens at the Learn Academy um, multiple times that it has so far, and um, they're really welcoming to beginners, and so that's why I really recommend that one. Great. Do we have any other questions out there? Okay. What, um, what age level are those meetups are? I mean, are there some for kids as well? And Leslie has kids this year as well. Yeah, there, there's a great organization, uh, Thoughts Stem. Uh, they have a really great uh, program out of UCSD. Um, and then there's also um, the League of Amazing Programmers. Uh, that I think that's what you were talking about yeah. when you were. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the I volunteered with. Did you go, did you teach there? My daughter's starting the league, the league this year, so. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I volunteered there, yeah. Okay. I was just there this morning teaching a class. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was just curious, because I was like, oh wow, they started fifth grade, and they'll be going through certification probably towards high school. And yeah. they learn real, like, professional skills that are really useful. Yeah, yeah I was very, very impressed with the curriculum. Yeah. Great. Cool. Also, good for you for getting your, your daughter into uh, coding at a young age. I really wish I had been doing that when I was a kid. Well, she has a lot of mentors, a lot of women to look up to, which is, I think, what we need more of. So I started joining groups, too, to kind of help facilitate that and work and volunteer with those organizations. So that helped a lot. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any final thoughts for advice for our uh, audience? Right. <laughs> you, you already gave them a whole lot. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. So you have about 10 minutes before uh, the next round of classes start. Um, I think. At least that's what this clock yeah. is going to say. Okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're, we're all going to be around today, so feel free to 
come and chat with us. We're all, I think, very passionate about this community and helping people uh, to transition into new careers or to flourish in their current careers. But I think that you know, building those networks and having those people that you can call and having that support is really important uh, as we're all like moving through this, uh, these paths and career growth and all of that. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for coming to Be Girl. Um, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.